So, what we're going to talk about here real quick are some New World Tarantula species and what that refers to is tarantulas that are found in North and South America. Old World species are typically found in Africa and Asia. So, typically when you're keeping tarantulas, New World species are the ones that are better for people to get into. They're usually less inclined to bite you. They usually have a less toxic venom and uh, just keeping them is a little bit easier than some of the Old World species. So, a lot of people recommend getting New World species as your first tarantula if you are going to be getting into tarantulas and arachnids or invertebrates. So, down here, right, I've got a uh, curly hair tarantula. Brachypelmile volpillosum. These are a really great first time tarantula if you haven't had spiders before. Super great. They're a terrestrial species. Uh, they're found in Honduras and some of the surrounding countries as well. And uh, Nicaragua. And super easy to take care of. We spray them down about two times a week. We do give them the opportunity to use a water dish as well. But we typically spray down the enclosure twice a week. And then we feed them one to two times a week. And great terrestrial species of tarantula, super easy to take care of. And then over here, we've got Brachypelma albiceps, which is a really cool species as well. This one actually just molted, so its colors are pretty bright and vibrant right now, which is really, really cool. So these are some examples of new world species of tarantula. Really great for people who are just getting into keeping spiders. So old world tarantulas right here. What I've got is a Harpectera pulcropes, uh, blue leg baboon. These are definitely more of an advanced species. These have a fairly toxic venom. You definitely want to be more careful when you're handling and working with them. Honestly, I don't recommend handling them at all. But if you have to handle them, you definitely need a more careful touch because if they bite you, it's going to hurt a lot. Uh, these are considered a medically significant spider. So if they bite you, it's probably going to send you to the hospital. It's not going to kill you but you're gonna wish that you were dead which is not fun this is an old world species of tarantula right here this is called a Poclotheria regalis or an Indian ornamental tarantula they are native to India and these are more of an advanced species of tarantula they're very commonly kept arboreal species but they are for people who have a little bit more experience if these bite you it's pretty much a guaranteed trip to the hospital for painkillers muscle relaxers and things like that because they have a much more toxic bite than some of your new world species so if you are interested in getting old world species I usually recommend having a little bit of experience with other types of tarantulas before you get into old world species like the Indian ornamentals or the blue leg baboons so here are some great standard setups for both your terrestrial animals and for your arboreal animals. So what I've got over here, this is called a green bottle blue tarantula, and this is a good terrestrial setup for this animal. I've got a couple inches, maybe an inch and a half, or two inches of substrate at the bottom. They're good to help keep that humidity in there. I've got some cork bark in here. Green bottle blues are heavy webbers, so this animal is webbed up all over the enclosure, but these are considered a terrestrial species where they live on top of the ground. So really great setup. You can even add a little water dish in here. We are pretty good about spraying down the animals and making sure that they stay hydrated, but uh, most people will give, give them, once they get to be adult size, they'll give them a water dish. And then over here, we got our arboreal setup. So this is an eight by eight by 12 exoterra style enclosure. Uh, you know, pretty much that's kind of your standard for some of your smaller arboreals. If you get a bigger arboreal, you might have to go with something like 12 by 12 by 18 or roughly that size. And so what I usually do with that is same thing, a, an inch or so of substrate on the bottom. And then I will put in some cork bark in here, some vines to make it look nice. And then of course they kind of do their own remodeling. And this girl has definitely done her remodeling and webbed all over this enclosure as well. So same thing, spray them down one to two times a week feed them one to two times a week and they do pretty well. So these are kind of like your standard setups for your terrestrial and for your arboreal setups and your tarantulas. All right, so what we've got right here are a couple tarantula molts and we're gonna be talking about how to sex your tarantula. If you're looking at the exuvum, the ex exoskeleton, you're gonna see that all the legs are laid out here. I try and lay that out after the tarantula molts, but the important part is the abdomen back here. And if you take a look, you'll see that there's these white openings right here. Those are called the book lungs. That's how your spider breathes. And in between the first set of book lungs up here, closest to the cephalothorax, the center part of the body, there is a little flap right here in between those book lungs. That is indicative of a female. And what that is, that is called the spermathesa. And that's where the females receive sperm when they're mating. 
on a male tarantula, it's going to be perfectly smooth in here. There's not going to be any flap. The flap shape does vary depending on which species it is. Sometimes it's one smooth flap like this. Sometimes it looks like little bunny ears in between there. But males will never have anything at that opening right there. It'll be completely smooth. Females will have this flap as you can see right here. This would be a male tarantula. And you can see that the first set of book lungs is closest to the center part of the body. It is smooth on the inside right here. There are no spermathosa there, so this is a male. And this is the only accurate way for you to tell whether or not your tarantula is a male or a female, unless they are sexually mature. Once a male reaches sexual maturity, he will get emboli on the end of his pedipalps, and his body will have a little bit of a different structure. But other than that, when the tarantulas are young and growing, they look completely the same. And so the, by molt sexing them, that's the only way while they're growing to determine whether or not you have a male or a female tarantula. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you do your research before getting a new animal.